Right, welcome everyone. Um, I didn't expect this to be my second video indoors, stuck indoors, but it is how it is at the moment. So what I'm going to do is run you through pre-tidal clench because obviously prep at the minute if everyone's going to get the prep side. So I just wanted to show you why I choose to use these pre-tidal clenches, what situations I use them in, why I cut them down. I'll show you how to cut them down, maximising spaces in your hook box as well because to be fair you don't want to be taking 10 of them so if you can just sort of minimize it to hooks either side then you can keep it down so that's what i want to run you through now right so before i start talking through the hook pan i want to say if, if you enjoy making your own hooks i'm not saying this is the better way it's just i find it a lot easier to do it this way because sometimes I don't get time to prep to be fair i'd rather be fishing on the bank than sitting in here tying hooks that's just my preference. Some people like tie knocks. I've got a good mate, Christian. He sits there tie knocks all the time. But I don't like doing that. So if I can get some in, which I, what I'd already use anyway, and I already tie up, this is why I'm going to use it. So I've got 011, two sizes here. The reason I've got 011 is because I don't, I don't feel I'm going to ever get broke. And when I've been fishing with it the past couple of weeks, I've had a few hundred pound weights, even had 200 pound weight, and I didn't get broke. And it, if you balance your tackle, so you're fishing 10, 11 hollow on the bottom, you're not going to get broke. And even 9 hollow shallow, or even 8 if you're fishing for eyes, you're not going to get broke. Don't worry about that. Just have confidence in your gear. So, I've got the two sizes here. I'm just going to run you through um, where I'd use them, why, and little situations which you need to change your oxide. So... For example, I've been going to Western Pools, Tunnel Barn and fished the Matchet Partridge. So, when I fished the Matchet Partridge, I caught a few carp in the in the edge on Magnuson ground bait. So, what I had on there, because I was looking a few carp, I just put a 16 on, 4 inches. Still keeps that last shot dead close to me up, so I get a dead positive bite still. But I didn't want a 3, just because it might be a bit warier. I know 11, 10 all, it's perfect. But... Where the three inch comes in is when you're shallow fishing. So you're catching eyed shallow on the red letter days, you catch the F1s this time of year when they come off the bottom. But the hook size depends on how how you're fishing. So for example, say if I was fishing ten inches deep to two foot for eyed, I'd look to use a sixteen. This is because it's got a bigger hook point and I feel that you want to use a bigger hook with these eye because they eject the bait so fast you want to be able to prick them and then make sure the fish is hooked and ship out your peg and what happens is with eye they're not they don't really swim out your peg they just wallow so you want to try and get the biggest hook hold you can without having to worry about the fishing come off as you're shipping back the times i'd use the 18 and three inch is when it's a bit deeper say three foot and you have a fish single maggot trying to pick up odd fish but that's where the f1s normally rock up so You've got to match your hook to what you're trying to catch. For example, if I was fishing in pellets across, in the summer I do use three inches, but that's because the fishing's a lot better. You f when you feed your bait, the fish come flying in. In this time of year, I think you can get away with being a bit more. They don't they don't come flying in your peg all the time. They just come in, eat your bait, go out because they're waking up slowly. So just think about hook length size to where you're fishing i know these come in six inch but i don't personally use them for f1s i think that's too long i think you'll miss you not see any bites to be honest the way they feed even i you just want to get that last dropper as close as you can to the hook without giving you a false indication so what i'm going to do now is bring the camera closer and just show you how i shorten these down right so got me hook length here six inches I'll just slide out the packet now. What I like to do is I've got a little bin over here as well. Just put it all in the bin so it's nice and tidy. Keeps your tidy mind. Right. So what I'm going to do is take your clamp off now. Leave that there. It's come off the... If you wanted, you can put it straight in your box. But there's, there's your clamp. To be fair, I'll try and get on camera there. Pretty well tied. It comes off the front of the spade. I'm not very good at tying up, so it's better than what I'd be able to do. So let's try and zoom this in now. What I do is on the hook length box here, it's got the higher pins. 
there. So what I do is put the hook around the bottom one, come around the top, see like that. Try and get in. Come around the top there. So now I pinch at the top. This end here, just take your hook off. So all of a sudden, you're left with that. You've got a loop there. There's the other loop from the uh, hook length itself. To give it a spin, to do a simple through there, put it through the loop. So you're left with that. Now what I like to do is I've got impression loop tire. It's got 8mm, 10mm, 15 and 12 I like to do it 8 all because same reason why I do my loop on my main line 8 inch so it, that's 4mm closer than if I did it 10mm. Small margins but I'm a bit of a faffer like that so all I do is put the, the big loop on the biggest one there pull it down so that goes over there and then pull it tight so all of a sudden you've got an 8mm loop pull that tight there Pull it, give it a tug, so all of a sudden you've got the tag end is the old loop. So what I do now is, just get me scissors, just cut that off, Take, put the thing in the bin. So now you've got a four inch rock lamp. So all I do is get on the four inch side and then put them crisscross to be fair i'd like to take credit for that but i nicked that off my god godfrey's one of his videos ages ago so i see that there now i can get probably 15 to 16 hooks on that and what did that take 20 seconds eight hooks there so nice and simple that's how you do that. and one thing once you've finished with your rig stick you can either keep it and put it in your bag store save it for when you're using the bigger car pucks or you can take the label off stick the label in your cleft box and stick it on there as well right so i hope you enjoyed my little demonstration some call it the lazy but to be fair if it, if it does the size which i want i'm going to use the pre-tide all day it saves me a lot of time and hassle also i want to touch on they also do the gpm version which i've got here i've got and if you can see that i've got six inch which i've just took straight off the rig stick reason why i don't use the mag store is i like to get a lot of hooks into these cases just to save me hassle so that's the reason why i don't use them i've got cut down four inch there the same hooks when i'm fishing in the edge and like i say i want my bulk bulk or shot close to the hook hope you enjoy this video and i'm at hoping to bring a few more in the coming weeks if you've got any suggestions or ideas you want me to cover any situations just just give us a message or a comment below and stay safe and hope to see you on the bank soon.